Today on BRS TV, we're going to cover feeding your corals. We'll cover why reefers feed, the various types of food available, and some of the tools that make it easier. Most of the corals kept in an aquarium are photosynthetic and capable of creating their own food supply using the symbiotic algae that lives within their tissue called zooxanthellae. However, many of these corals are also capable of capturing prey or absorbing nutrients to supplement their nutritional needs. Capturing prey can provide additional nutrients like amino acids and possibly color pigments. That said, most of these corals are fully capable of surviving on light alone or the nutrients added to the tank from feeding the fish. So why do we feed? To answer this, we have to have a better understanding of how corals utilize the available nutrients and energy. Generally speaking, corals will utilize energy and nutrients in the following order. First for metabolic function and tissue repair, then growth, and lastly for reproduction. We're looking to maximize the health of the coral so it's more resistant to environmental stresses and physical damage, as well as increased overall growth rates. Both of these things are highly desirable to most reefers. Recently, the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology did a study on the effects of light, water flow, and coral foods, which demonstrated the effect of some coral foods on growth. Many of the foods tested saw significant gains in growth over the control tank with natural filtered seawater. Reef chili and reef roid saw the biggest gains, both of which were the only ones which achieved an increase in growth with Piscillopora. Reef roid saw the largest overall combined increase, and reef chili achieved the fastest growing coral fragment by both weight and displacement. It achieved this at around one-tenth the dose by weight, which makes it pretty cost effective. For the most part, coral foods come in a few varieties. The first is prey ranging in size from mice shrimp to tiny crustaceans like cyclopes to phytoplankton, or even products which promote exponential growth of bacteria as a food source. Corals will capture these prey and break them down into elements useful for the coral. Some of the more common foods in this group are frozen mice shrimp, the Ellos plankton supplement, and the super popular cyclopes. Some reefers will also culture their own live phytoplankton and rotifers. The next group is artificial prey, which can be a variety of things, including nutrient-dense powders, liquids, or pellets. Most of these foods are very rich in nutrients, so a little goes a long way. While some of them may look similar to fish food, the good ones don't contain wheat, soy, or other plant fibers most corals can't digest. Many of these foods are an excellent way to get a large amount of nutrition into a small form factor. A good example of this is the LPS Grow and Color from Fauna Marin. There are also some products like Reef Chili that combine natural and artificial prey into a single product. The last group are products which have essentially already been broken down into their useful components. This includes most of the amino acid and carbohydrate products. This theoretically makes it much easier for the coral to digest and utilize because they don't have to expend energy into breaking down the whole foods into these components. There are a variety of products like this out there. Red Sea has a reef energy combo pack with the A portion rich in carbohydrates and the B portion in amino acids and vitamins. This is a fairly straightforward and easy to use program. Ellos also sells a similar combo with their Omega amino acid formula and the Pro Skimmer Complex Carbohydrate Additive. Another popular option is the Coralin Zucht line. KZ is best known for the Zeobit system, which is an ultra-low nutrient method of reefing that can produce some pretty stunning tanks. However, a vast majority of their products can be used outside of the Zeobit system to help increase health, growth, and coloring. Some of the more popular products here are the Poles Extra, Poles Coral Vitalizer, the Amino Acid Concentrates, Coral Booster, and Sponge Power Concentrate. If you're interested in the KZ line, it's commonly recommended to start with the Coral Vitalizer and Poles Extra, as they can often provide some of the most noticeable results. There are a variety of ways to feed all of the products mentioned today. Most of them can be broadcast fed by adding them directly to the tank. However, many of them may benefit by being target fed. With shrimp, this can often be done with a tool like a turkey baster. Depending on the one you get, you might want to cut the end off to open the hole a bit. For smaller foods or liquids, this can be done with a tool like a syringe or small flexible bottle. 
We sell a bottle like this for use with rechili. The bottle not only makes it easier to target feed, but also can be used to rehydrate some of the dry products, so they're less likely to float. Two Little Fishes also sells a piece of equipment known as Julian's Thing, which makes it pretty easy to target feed without putting your hand into the tank. Most people will also turn off their power heads when target feeding as well. This will make it a lot easier to aim and direct the food where you want it to go. Most aquarium controllers and some pumps have a feed mode to automate this type of thing. Some reefers may also elect to turn off their skimmer for a while as well. One last tip on feeding your corals. Start slow. Most of these products are fairly nutrient dense, so a little goes a long way. Same as any other food you put in the tank, if you start to see additional algae growth, reduce the dose until you find the right dosage for your tank. That wraps up today's episode. If you'd like to be notified when new episodes come out, subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit BulkReefSupply.com and sign up for our newsletter. Thank you for watching BRS TV.